Only one place to start, really, Matt, a mammoth journey to Carlisle. Well, for you tomorrow, I guess. I mean, how do you prepare the guys for spending a week on the coach? Yeah, well, we, we train well today. Um, we'll set off early tomorrow morning. I think it's an eight o'clock departure from the training grounds. We'll train at Birmingham FA, FA probably midday on the way up, on the way through, um, whilst keeping an eye on the traffic once we get past Birmingham as well. So we'll only do 45 minutes to an hour's work tomorrow, just fine-tuning a few bits and pieces in preparation for Saturday. And then it's another long journey from Birmingham up to Carlisle, um, and we try and do it as, as as sensibly as we possibly can, stop when we need to stop, get the food on board the players uh, and on board the coach as well when we need to, um, but also allow the players to relax and, and not enjoy each other's company because they'll be sick to death of each other after eight or nine hours on a coach, but somehow find a way to, to stay functional during a journey, sleep when they need to sleep, but then talk to each other, play cards, play games. They'll, they'll watch a whole host of films. I'll do a little bit of work at the front of the coach. And then, then we get there, have an evening meal, and hopefully they'll have a really good night's sleep in preparation for what will be a big game on Saturday. It must take a lot out of them mentally and physically. I mean, you've got that journey back and then we've got a short week next week because we've got one o'clock Friday game and then we've got, you know, Monday as well. So how does that affect your preparations next week as well? Yes, look, you know, it's a slightly different week next week in terms of the schedule going to Easter weekend, playing Friday, Monday. Um, but we, we, we still have to train, we still have to do the work. Um, obviously, the players will be out on their feet probably on Saturday night and Sunday, and that probably feeds into Monday when you want to do a little bit of work with them. So we'll have to be sensible the following week. But you know, we, we should be used to it by now. We've done it often enough. We, we do it at different venues and different places around the country. Um, and our fans will be doing exactly the same. So there's worse things to be doing in the world um, than going up to Carlisle and playing a game of football and playing a game of football and hopefully a good pitch against a good team in front of a good number of people in terms of the crowd. So we're looking forward to it. We'll be tired, but that's no problem whatsoever. And as soon as Carlisle's out of the way, then our focus quickly shifts to the, the following Friday. You come up against the side in good form as well. Picked up a very late point against Tranmere. They've beaten Bristol Rovers and Northampton in the last few weeks. So, you know, there's a, a lot to be wary of there. Yeah, one of the form teams in the division um, since the managers took over, done a fantastic job and they were in a relegation battle at the time and well and truly in a relegation battle to to see that form turn around like it has done has, has been incredible and inspirational. So full credit to, to Carlisle. Um, we hope that form and run halts this weekend um, at the expense of ourselves, but we know we'll have to play well in order for that to, that to happen. Um, we, we generally play pretty well when we go up there. The pitch suits us. Um, so we'll have a good feeling about the environment. In the past couple of seasons, either we've gone with nobody there or a small amount of people there in terms of crowd. And from what I can gather from the games I've watched and the, the numbers I've seen from the crowds previously at their home games, um, there's been, been between four and 6,000 people. So a slightly different atmosphere than what we're used to up there. Um, and they'll be back in their, their team who's doing fantastically well and done so well under a manager they, they know and love. But... We have to focus on ourselves. Um, we can't really control how Carlisle play. We can't control the environment. We can't control the, the, the crowd. We've got to get that ball exactly where we need it and, and try and hurt the opposition um, and go for it. We've got nothing to lose this weekend. We've got nothing to lose in the next six or seven games. Um, probably the same for Carlisle this weekend in, the, their, in relation to their league position. So we, we go with a, a smile on our face, um, a little bit of confidence behind us, um, but really looking forward to a good game of football. And to... Two informed teams in Port Vale and Newport and picked up four points as well. So, you know, that you've got to take confidence from those kind of games as well. Yeah, and not just confidence from our, our recent form and, and those games you've mentioned there, but confidence from the, how many previous games? The 38, 39 games previously. Um, we've done it time and time again this season, hence our, our current league position. Um, and whatever we face this weekend um, won't be too dissimilar to what we faced on a number of occasions. Um, and we have to focus on our own performance. We're a big believer in that. Um, but we, we, we need the group to realise what put us in this position. Um, and before we add any quality to that pitch, we've got to have a substance of sheer desire, will, hard work, energy, um, team spirit and togetherness. Um, everything you have to show in any game of football, let alone when you go up to Carlisle. It's a large, good quality pitch and surface at Carlisle as well. Do you think that's something that will potentially fit our playing style? I hope so. I hope so. I hope it's a, a quick game of football. I hope most of the football is played on the floor. Um, it always seems a big pitch. I hope the weather doesn't play its part in terms of the wind and, and so on and so forth. It's, it's quite an open ground and we know how much they struggle in the middle of winter with the floods and so on and so forth. Full credit that goes to their ground staff and, and their, themselves as a football club because we know as much as anyone how difficult it is to produce a good pitch throughout the season, let alone this time of year. So um, we're so proud of our current pitch. So they need to be proud of their, their playing surface as well. Um, and... We'll only know if it suits us come five o'clock on Saturday. If we look back a couple of weeks, I think you're down to just just Archie as your, your fit centre mid um, you know, choice. And now 
Callum slotted in there, Tim's back, Nigel's back from suspension. And suddenly you've got a lot more options to work with. Yeah, you know, it's so important to have options and so important to be able to change the bench, change the, the game from the bench. Um, fantastic to see how well Callum Rowe's done in, in recent weeks. Um, really performed to a, to a level which um, we didn't underestimate, but we didn't quite expect to come in, him to come in and perform so well. Took a lot of weight off Archie, took a lot of weight off Tim. Meant we could look after Tim when we need, need, needed to. Um, and then the reintroduction of, of Nigel boost, boost that midfield group, I suppose. And then obviously we've got MJ in and around that that position as well. Harry Kite's not a million miles away, um, but he probably won't be on the pitch for the next few weeks. So we're only going to get stronger. Well, I hope we're only going to get stronger from this point onwards. Um, Jonathan Grounds this weekend will come to some him, but he might be involved over Easter weekend. And Sam Nombe is showing good signs of where he needs to get to. Um, but the next couple of weeks will be the biggest factor in relation to his, his recovery from that injury. I spoke to Callum earlier um, on Saturday's game and he said that the way you'd been with him and the things you said to him had given him such confidence and, you know, prepared him to slot into the team. Is that such an important part of the manager role, that sort of man man management as well? Yes. And in all honesty, out of a squad of 30 players, for example, or 20 players, I've got 11 happy players on a Saturday afternoon and probably got a, a group of disgruntled or disappointed or disillusioned players. Um, but our environment is key to, to that. They have to understand the bigger picture. They have to understand why they're not playing. And we have those honest conversations in terms of where they need to improve. And Callum's had a bit of a disjointed season, but has well performed well when he's had his opportunity, whether that was with the 23s early on in the season in, in terms of their campaign in that midfield position or when he's gone out on loan to start with, he performed really well. So we knew he was fit, we knew he was mobile, we knew he was hungry. Um, I knew I could trust a lot of his game, um, but he also overperformed in, in some areas as well. So he's been a real, not fine, but a real bonus in terms of that midfield group, which we, we spoke about. And as a manager and as a group of staff, we, we care about everyone at this football club. Whether they're out on loan, whether they're injured, whether they're playing week in, week out in the first team, whether they're in the academy, whether it's a member of staff, we really care about each other. And regardless of what the current situation is for that individual, we still talk to them, we still treat them the same as every other person in this football club with respect first and foremost, but also an investment that we want them to improve. We speak to them when they sign. We speak to the young boys when they sign their contracts. We want these players to improve. It's an investment from our part. And as long as they stay invested, which Callum has done every single day, even when he's not been involved with the first team, every single day of training, that's my biggest credit to, to Callum. And he's got the rewards recently off the back of it. And the fans voted Sam Stubbs as their player of the month for this month. I think that's testament to his hard work in getting to where he's got to over the last, well, since he signed for us, really. Yeah, well, it took him long enough to get on the pitch, didn't it? Best part of a year. Um, but similar to, to Callum, when when Sam was going through those difficult moments and difficult times, we tried to support him as best we possibly can. Um, still, hopefully, it was a good enough environment to get him through what was a really difficult year for him because you've all seen what he's like as a character. He's desperate to play and to perform and put himself out there. And we're seeing the benefits of him at the moment. Look, he's got to stay fit. He's got to stay humble. He's got to stay understanding of what his role is within the team. Um, but also what a good figure he is out on that pitch. And I think Cam's just received play of the month and it, um, in terms of the league aspect. And, and obviously Sam in relation to the, the club accolade. Um, that's our defensive group, I suppose. Um, a goalkeeper and our middle centre-half. So everyone's got to take credit for that. But it'd be great if we got some of those attacking players in those discussions and in those competitions and in those runnings um, from now until the end of the season. Sound, sound very much fit that profile that you've been looking for as your sort of like centre defensive player at the club since you came in, really. You know, the no nonsense sort of leader from the back kind of thing. Yeah, look, he's mobile. That's a big thing as a centre half. Um, he's mobile. He can play football, um, but his first thought has got to be to be the best defender on that football pitch. It's, I use that line to every single player who's in a defensive position. Be the best defender first and foremost, and I can trust you as a manager. I can put you on the pitch, and then everything else is a bonus off the back of that. And he's performed well. He's chipped in with some set piece goals. Um, he's chipped in with some fantastic performances, and he's influenced those around him. So we knew his quality when we signed him. We didn't expect him to be out for a year when we did sign him. We thought it was going to be more like six weeks. Um, but we're really pleased he, he's, he's fit and, and on that pitch. And he seems to be enjoying his football and performing, obviously, very well. Um, first and foremost for the player, because he went through, you know, he went through a really difficult period for any young player, let alone one who's got such a bright future ahead of him. Um, and now we're hopefully giving him a foundation for what's next. And somehow it's only seven to go now. Um, we're at the business end and we put ourselves in a really good position, but I guess it's very much about, you know, looking only ahead to the next game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
we can't look too far ahead as much as we are. We can all daydream every now and then and allow ourselves to think about the ifs and buts and, and maybes. Um, what we've done all season is just concentrate on the next game. Um, we're looking forward to a productive month. Hopefully it's a productive month in relation to a points tally, um, which started well at Newport. Hopefully it continues against Carlisle this weekend. But it's easy for me to say, but I'll keep on saying it. We have to try and find a way to enjoy this because we've been in different positions as a football club. We've been in relegation battles. We've been in the National League. You know, we've I've been in part of promotion in the past and playoff campaigns. We've got to find a way to enjoy it. Um, we'll always enjoy the end and we'll always enjoy it when it's over, but we don't want to look back with any regrets. Um, and that's my constant message to this group of players. Find a way to, to enjoy it, um, but also find a way to look back with no regrets whatsoever over the season and certainly not over these last seven games. And I mean, the fans have really enjoyed the season so far. And we always say it, don't we? But we're nearly 300, I think 350 tickets now have been sold for that, you know, 700 mile journey, return journey from Mexico. They're a bit special already, aren't they? They are special. Um, I can't keep saying it, but like everything else, I'll keep saying it. Um, incredible. And, and not just now when we're in a good position, but throughout the season. If this game had been second or third game of the season, I think we went to Barrow. Was it third game of the season? And we hadn't scored. We hadn't won yet. Um, there was all murmurs and, and rumours and so on and so forth and, and they supported us really well up at Barrow on a horrible windy night where you know there's barely anyone there apart from our City fans in great voice and I think we drew nil nil that evening so they make the journey no matter what and that was on a Tuesday night <laughs> as well um, so they make the journey no matter what and they make those sacrifices um, and we appreciate it so so much and we look forward to seeing them when we go out on that pitch on Saturday and we look forward to Clapping them at the end, win, lose or draw, will give them a great ovation because we fully understand what a big journey it is in relation to, to time, to money, to expense, to sacrifices. Um, but we have to do it together. And anything we achieve this season, we've got to keep on doing it together. That's ourselves, the fans and the football club. Just finally, I can't not mention it, but we've seen you'll potentially be dusting off the boots for the uh, Adam Sandsfield Memorial match at Hewish Park in May. I mean, uh, how's the match fitness looking? It's not great at the moment. Um, on the back of the old back injuries and the ankle injuries and the misshapen foot, um, I've not ran properly for a year. So um, since signing up, or since agreeing to play in this game of football, um, I've, I've done two runs, two 15-minute runs, and, and my fitness and you know, my body aches now. I'm, I turned 40 in January and, and all of a sudden my body's starting to ache. So, um, But it's for a great cause you know, and for all the right reasons in relation to Stano. Um, and regardless if I'm playing or not playing, I just hope as many City fans and as many football supporters as possible go and make it the day that it could potentially be. Um, so I'd ask as many people as they possibly can to, to get a ticket and support the, the right causes. And hopefully you'll see a good enough spectacle um, on that pitch. There's, there's some fantastic characters. There's, there's some real legends, not, 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 not myself by any means, but some real legends out there um, and some real quality. And I know some of those players or some of those ex-players still keep pretty fit. Um, so I'll have to do a little bit of training at some stage. Maybe I'll start joining in a, a Friday night with you guys. You not thought about maybe putting yourself in golf one last time then? Well, possibly. If, look, when, when they contacted me, they said, do you, do you want to manage a team? Um, the Southwest Legends. And I thought, look, I've, I've managed a team now throughout the season. <laughs> I need a little break from that. So the only other thing I could do was, was to play. Um, so hopefully I, I play in a, a, a sensible position um, and then maybe work my way back on the pitch and maybe off the pitch. <laughs> but we'll wait and see. Um, and I know that some City fans will be there. But like I said, I'd ask as many City fans as possible to, to come and support. And, and you never know, we might be celebrating something together.